Lorenz algebra 2 pre-calculus. We're doing 10.3 in pre-calc, which is ellipses. Uh, so the standard form of, an, form of an ellipse with a center at h comma k. Uh, so there's two different kinds of ellipses that we're looking at here. We're looking at the long skinny ones that sort of look like Stewie Griffin's face. And we're looking at the uh, tall skinny ones, right, that sort of look like Bert from Sesame Street. So uh, or like you could say, hey, Arnold, uh, and I don't know, uh, Mr. Potato Head. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so uh, when we look at this, right, um, so in the equation we have, keep in mind a couple things. One, x always goes with h because h is the x coordinate of the center, right? And y always goes with k because k is the y coordinate, right? So you'll see x minus h's and you'll see y minus k's. So when you're writing the equation of ellipse, uh, it's going to be x minus h quantity squared, and it's going to be o over top of either an a or a b squared. So notice that if, if my major axis is horizontal, meaning in the x direction, right, so I wrote horizontal and then x, right, then the x goes on top of the major axis's number, which is a squared. If the major axis is vertical, like over here, right, where, where vertical is the y, then the y goes on top of the major axis is number, or axes is number, axis, it's hard to say axis with a possessive uh, number, which is a, right? So over the a squared. So in this situation, the only difference between being long and skinny or tall and skinny is whether it's the x on top of the a uh, squared or the y on top of the a squared. Also notice that because uh, A is physically longer than B, that's why it's called the major axis and B is the minor axis. So essentially, if the X squared is on top of the bigger number, then it's a long skinny ellipse. If the Y squared is on top of the bigger number, because A squared will be bigger than B squared, then it's a tall skinny ellipse, okay? Uh, so, and there's a lot of stuff down here that's written kind of tiny and you can write it down or you can not. I don't actually use this information, but I thought I'd walk you through it. So if H K, H comma K is the middle, to find the vertices, I would go a units in either direction, which means that this vertex would have the coordinates h plus a, because I went a units to the right, comma k. The height didn't change, it's still a k. This vertex would be h minus a, because I went a units to the left, and still a k. The non-vertices, which again is totally a hoganism, would be b units up and down from the center. So if the center was h comma k, this will be h comma k plus b, because I moved up b units. And this will be h comma k minus b, because I moved down k units. Uh, similarly, the foci are c units away from the center. So just like the vertex was h plus a comma k, this would be h plus c comma k, which kind of got erased by my finger, but h plus c comma k. And this one would be h minus c comma k. Again, I think that's a lot of me letters to memorize. And when we walk through some examples in a little bit, you'll see that it's kind of easier to understand how it works rather than to just try and shove all this stuff in your brain and memorize it. Uh, the same rules apply for the vertical major axis, except obviously a is now in the vertical direction. So whatever your y coordinate is, which is k, you would move up a unit. So my vertex up here is h comma k plus a, because k was the y coordinate. So to move up, I move k plus a. Uh, this vertex is h comma k minus a because I went down a units. On my non-vertices, which are totally a hoganism, I'd move b units to the left and right. Uh, so instead of this being, so this was the h was the x coordinate, so this will be h minus b because I went left b, but the y coordinate is still k, and this will be h plus b, and the y coordinate is still k. Uh, and then these foci, which I didn't squeeze on there because I was a little bit out of space, but again, similar to the way the vertices work, it would be h comma, and then k plus c, because from k I went up c units, and then k minus c would be the y-coordinate here. So uh, what we're going to do is some examples first, where we start by graphing ellipses, and uh, after we work on graphing them, then we'll start talking about how to actually write these equations from other information, but we should definitely start uh, with this. Now there is one other piece of information you need uh, before we graph them, and I'm going to throw that in here. Uh, so what we haven't talked about here, in the equation you can see a, and you can see b, but what you can't see is the letter C, which I've mentioned you need to find the position of the foci. So there's a way to find C. When we go to find C, right, which is the distance from the center to the foci, uh, the way my brain always remembers it is that it's not Pythagorean theorem. So for an ellipse, A squared minus B squared equals C squared. Um, so in my brain, so, so Hogan's very sad, damaged brain, right? Hogan's brain says, oh, it's not Pythagorean theorem. Um, 
because the Pythagorean theorem would be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in my brain, I always think, oh, it's, it's the one that's not Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and I know that it's a minus b because a is the bigger number and, and b would be the smaller number. So it's a squared minus b squared, not the other way around. So what we're going to do is in the next problem, uh, we're going to do some examples where we actually graph some stuff. We're going to plot the foci and everything else.